Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session. So, in the previous sessions, uh, we discussed the monetary policy in the US system in detail. In this session, uh, let us have a discussion on the monetary policy in India. Uh, about the, the monetary policy, the uh, central bank of India as you, are well, as you are well aware, that is the Reserve Bank of India, this is the central bank of India. Uh, central bank for our country. The Reserve Bank of India is the Central Bank of India uh, was established uh, on April 1st 1935 in accordance with the provisions of the RBI Act uh, 1934 and as you know is headquartered in Mumbai. Uh, RBI is governed by a central board headed by a governor appointed by the uh, central government. So, RBI also you know that RBI has 20 regional offices uh, across India. So, let us have a quick overview of the functions of the RBI which will help you to further understand uh, how uh, RBI's monetary policies uh, to understand more about RBI's monetary policy as well. So, the first function important function of RBI is to issue a currency except one rupee note and coins of smaller denominations other currencies are issued by the currencies are mainly issued by RBI. So, another function uh, is to act as banker to government. So, the so RBI is the banker to both central and state government. So, here it ca RBI carries out all banking businesses of the government. Uh, government keeps their cash balances in the current account with the central bank. Similarly, central bank accepts, receives and make payments on behalf of the governments. Central bank also gives loans and advances to government for temporary periods. Uh, in addition, um, the RBI also uh, engage in exchange control. So, RBI takes steps to ensure external value of a rupee that is the exchange rate using exchange control system. As you may be aware in the exchange rate determination there are mainly two regime one is uh, fixed exchange regime, fixed exchange rate regime and another one is uh, flexible uh, exchange rate regime. Uh, flexible exchange rate. Um, so, in the case of fixed exchange rate, um, the central government, the governments of both countries where the exchange rate is fixed, for example, US and India, if we are following fixed exchange rate, uh, then the exchange rate is already fixed and it is the responsibility of both central bank to ensure that the exchange rate is fixed, uh, is maintained at the fixed rate. But at then another regime is that is more, most common these days that is flexible exchange rate that means the exchange rate uh, is determined by demand and supply for foreign exchange that does a demand and supply for uh, foreign currency. Uh, that means also it also can be said the supply and demand for export and import that uh, export and import that actually leads to demand for uh, foreign exchange demand and supply of foreign exchange. And another thing is uh, the third uh, regime is the uh, managed floating uh, system that is the third one uh, this is one two and three third one is uh, managed float that means um, it is also called as dirty float that means government or central bank. Uh, intervene in the market they normally allow in the normal time it will be flexible exchange regime but if the uh, uh, rbi central bank sees that the home currency value is depreciating and is at a danger then at that time uh, central bank will uh, intervene in the market by supplying foreign exchange supplying foreign exchange from its reserve uh, then uh, this is called as a uh, managed floating system. So, that means sometime Reserve Bank of India uh, can do the managed floating to ensure that uh, Indian the value of Indian rupee is not depreciating below a certain threshold. So, it is also that means uh, engage in exchange control. Then another function uh, is to act as bankers bank and supervisor. 
So as a bank is bank and supervisor, you can say the central bank acts as a regulator and supervisor of the financial system, not only for the bank also but also for the entire financial system. So it prescribes uh, broad parameters of banking operations uh, within which the country's banking and financial system functions. So here uh, you can see that the main objective is to maintain public confidence in the system, uh, protect depositors' interest and provide uh, cost effective banking services to the public. So, in this regard, uh, central bank act as the custodian of their cash reserves, custodian of the uh, banking system's cash reserve. That means they have to keep uh, cash required cash reserve ratio. Cash reserve ratio that is the required one. Uh, they have to keep with the central bank, and it also acts as um, lender of last resort. That means RBI guarantees solvency and provides financial accommodation to commercial banks. So, by rediscounting their eligible securities and bill of exchange and by providing loans against their securities, uh, central bank by providing temporary financial accommodation saves financial structure of the country from collapse. And in addition, the central bank acts as the bank's point of clearance, the central clearance that means uh, between transaction between banks are cleared through the central bank and settlements and transfers are all done by the central bank. So, in addition you also know, the, know that the central bank uh, it prescribed the capital ratio for the uh, capital ratio for the uh, member banks and it also uh, monitor uh, and supervise the banking activity for example through uh, prompt corrective actions etc. So, here we know that by now you are familiar that uh, RBI is the monetary authority in the country. So, it has control is the controller of credit as well as the money supply in the economy. So, controls credit and money supply uh, through its monetary policy which consists of two parts one is currency that the issue of currency then other one is through the influencing the credit, uh, credit supply with the banking system. So, Central bank has monopoly of issuing notes as you know that except some coins of coins the rest of the currency is mainly issued by the central bank and thereby can control uh, the volume of currency. And you also know that in the monetary base, monetary base is C plus R and uh, C that the currency uh, here uh, the central bank has more control over uh, the C by printing or issuing new currency into the system. And it also formulates and implements the monetary policy. So, the objective here is uh, maintaining price stability uh, and ensuring adequate flow of credit to productive sectors. Keeping that in mind, uh, the Reserve Bank formulates and implements monetary policy. So, before moving further, since we are talking about more money, monetary policy, let us have a clear idea what are the monetary aggregate measures in India. So, the coming to the first part the monetary base MB, uh, MB consists of currency in circulation uh, plus bankers deposits with the RBI, this is nothing but uh, the reserves that we talk. Uh, this is so the currency plus uh, reserves uh, plus other deposits with the RBI, that means um, the deposits by for example, Prime Minister, XPM, uh, Governors, etc. Uh, that also uh, become part of the monetary base here. That is called uh, M0. This is M0 uh, money money supply definition, monetary aggregates uh, definition. Then coming to M1, M1 means currency with the public that is C plus demand deposit with the banking system plus other deposits with the RBI. So, this by now I am sure you are familiar with all this concept uh, based on uh, our discussion in the previous sessions. Uh, then coming to M2, uh, our M2 money definition is M1 plus saving deposits of post office savings banks. Then M3, this is the broad money supply definition in India we follow, we currently follow this one. Uh, this is called M1 plus time deposit with the banking system. That means that M1 plus time deposits with the banking system. This consists of the broad money supply definition that is the M3 money definition. So, in India when we talk about monetary aggregates, we mostly focus on uh, this M3 money supply definition.
the instruments of monetary policy let me give you an overview what are the tools uh, the RBA has been following uh, as part of its monetary policy. There are several uh, direct and indirect instruments that are used for implementing monetary policy in India. The one the key rate that you often read in the newspaper and in the media is that the main policy tool that is the repo rate. Uh, the interest rate at which the RBI provides liquidity under the liquidity adjustment facility against the collateral of government and other approved securities. So, the say you can say that the rate at which RBI gives uh, loans to the member banks against collateral of government and other approved securities. Uh, this is the key tools. Then another tool is reverse repo, repo rate. This is here actually in the rate the uh, at which the RBI absorbs liquidity from banks against collateral of government eligible government securities under the LAF program facility. So here actually means the RBI borrows from the central bank, so the member banks uh, using the rate using the rate using a uh, reverse repo rate. So normally uh, repo rate is uh, will be greater than the reverse repo rate. Okay, another tool is uh, cash reserve ratio. It means the average you are already familiar with this concept but let me again uh, give the correct uh, definition. Uh, the average daily balance that a bank is required to maintain uh, with the reserve bank as per the as a percent of its net demand and time liabilities as on the last Friday of the second preceding fortnight that the RBI may notify from time to time in the official gazette. So that means the certain fraction of the total deposit including demand and liabilities that should be kept with the uh, central bank or with the RBI which is called as CRR. Then comes statutory liquidity ratio. It is uh, most uh, prevalent mainly in only in India, not in other countries. Um, so in India, in addition to cash reserve ratio, uh, banks are also required to keep uh, some of their assets uh, in the form of uh, SLR, statutory uh, liquidity ratio. That means every bank shall maintain uh, in India. Uh, assets the value of which shall not be less than such a percentage of the total of its demand and time liabilities in India as on the last Friday of the second preceding fortnight. So here uh, this they have to keep a certain fraction approximately in India it comes for example 18 percentage. So 18 percentage of their total uh, demand and time liabilities it should be kept it should be invested in government securities cash or gold. This is in addition to uh, cash reserve ratio. Suppose the cash reserve ratio is 4 percentage that is should be kept with the central bank uh, plus of their total asset another 18 percentage this should be uh, this must be uh, invested minimum of 18 percentage should be uh, invested in uh, government securities cash or gold. This is to ensure that uh, banks are having sufficient uh, liquidity in order to meet unforeseen deposit outflow. Also the objective is to ensure that uh, there is no bank failure or no bank banking crisis and no bank failure. Another tool is uh, you are familiar now the about this one as well uh, open market operation. So these include outright purchase or sale of government securities uh, by the reserve bank for injection or absorption of durable liquidity in the banking system. So if they want to inject uh, more money, uh, more liquidity uh, in the economy that means the central bank RBI will do open market purchase. Otherwise if they want to reduce that means uh, reduce uh, suck, suck the uh, liquidity or reduce the liquidity in the banking system then the RBI will sell government securities in the market and take back uh, reduce the money supply in the economy in the banking system. Uh, then another tool is bank rate. This rate is at which RBI is re ready to buy or rediscount bills of exchange or other commercial paper and actually the bank rate is used as a tool act as a panel rate charged on banks for shortfalls in meeting their uh, reserve requirements. Suppose if uh, the banks are if, uh, unable to keep uh, the cash reserve ratio that this one 
uh, for a stipulated period of time if they fail keep on failing to uh, maintain this uh, rate then there are some provision that there are some penal rate at which uh, the bank the penalty that the bank need to pay to the uh, central bank the rate is fixed be fixed at the bank rate this is uh, the rate is actually the bank rate the penalty rate then coming some more uh, instrument that is called standing depository facility rate that is the rate at which rbi accept uncollateralized deposits on an overnight basis uh, then comes marginal standing facility also called as msf rate this is the penal rate at which banks can borrow on an overnight basis from the rbi by dipping into their slr portfolio up to a predefined limit so this is uh, this provides a safety valve against unanticipated liquidity shocks to the banking system so if the uh, a bank banks is uh, if, uh, uh, unable to meet uh, its liquidity then they can borrow it from the using the marginal standing facility uh, window uh, at this rate uh, then call liquidity adjustment facility or also called as laf refers to the rbi's operation through which it injects absolute liquidity into the banking system it consists of overnight uh, as well as term repo uh, reverse repo rate sdf and msf uh, there are some more is there i lay lf corridor uh, lf corridor has the marginal standing facility rate as its upper bound and standing deposit facility rate as the lower bound with the policy repo rate in the middle of the corridor so uh, i would suggest you visit the rbi website and there are lots of uh, resources uh, given um, in the rbi website about this instrument for the clarification about this instruments and how they have been used etc let's now talk about the monetary policy framework in may 2016 the rbi act 1934 was amended to provide a statutory basis for the implementation of the flexible inflation targeting framework so the central government in consultation with the rbi determines the inflation target in terms of the consumer price index once in 5 years so since uh, 2016 uh, we have been following the inflation target the inflation targeting as one of the main policy framework uh, for the uh, uh, monetary policy in 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 india so accordingly uh, on august 2016 the central government's uh, fix 4 percentage uh, so central government fix 4 uh, percentage consumer price index inflation as the target for the period from august that 2016 to 2021 with an upper uh, tolerance limit of 6 percentage and lower tolerance limit of 2 percentage that means the inflation target the inflation target uh, is equal to 4 percentage that is using the consumer price index uh, with the uh, upper and lower tolerance limit of 2 that means the minimum it can go uh, 2 percentage and maximum it can go 6 percentage and this is the mandate uh, given to the rbi by the central government and again uh, initially it was for till 2021 this has been extended to 2026 the same uh, ban that the upper limit and lower the target is 4 percentage uh, with a uh, upper limit and lower limit uh, going to be 2 percentage so it, it can be not necessary that uh, we can maintain every time uh, the rbi is able to maintain this uh, lower limit and upper limit but There, there can be some instances where it can they can fail that means central government has notified the following as the factors that constitute failure to achieve the inflation target the average inflation is more than the upper tolerance level of the inflation target for any uh, three consecutive quarters and the average inflation is less than the lower tolerance level for any three consecutive quarters and in order to implement achieve this um inflation target and also the overall to make the uh, implement the monetary policy policy a committee has been appointed that is called monetary policy committee in amendment of the rbi act it provides the constitution of a six member monetary policy committee to determine the policy rate required to achieve the inflation target so you can see that in the us it is the federal open market committee that is the main body 
uh, interested with the monetary policy and they use their open market uh, operation as the main policy tool to achieve in to implement the monetary policy but in india we use we have monetary policy committee and we use the repo rate repo rate as the main policy tool uh, to achieve uh, its monetary policy targets so about this committee the first empowered uh, six member monetary policy committee was constituted on 2016 the members are uh, governor deputy governor one officer from rbi and three external experts so far they were eminent personalities from research and academia and the mpc is required to meet at least four times uh, in a year so each member of the mpc has one vote and in the event of an equality of votes the governor has a second or casting vote so each member of the monetary policy committee writes a statement specifying the reason for voting in favor of or against the proposed resolution so the monetary policy process it seems like that the, um, uh, here uh, the reserve bank has notified uh reserve bank of india monetary policy committee and monetary policy process regulation 2016 uh, which came into effect from august 2016 uh, as the main framework for implementing the monetary policy so here the schedule of monetary policy voting decision meet uh, decision uh, meeting for the end year fiscal year, fiscal year is announced in, in advance uh, so however some in some emergency uh, they meet Uh, without advance uh, announcement of the meeting date as well so the rbi's monetary policy department assist the mpc in formulating the monetary policy the mpc in its meeting uh, reviews the surveys conducted by the rbi to gauge uh, consumer confidence um, uh, households inflation expectation these details also you can get from rbi website uh, that, that they have been conducting survey and all the results are already uploaded on rbi website and also the corporate sector performance credit conditions the outlook of the industrial services and infrastructure sectors and the projections of professional forecasters all these uh, has been uh, all these uh, has been collected by rbi's monetary policy department and it will be made available to the mpc they review uh, all these details so mpc also reviews in detail the staff's macroeconomic projection and alternative scenarios around various risk of the outlook so drawing on the above and after extensive discussion on the stance of monetary policy the mpc adopts a resolution so the mpc resolution uh, the bank publishes rbi publishes after the conclusion of every meeting of the mpc the resolution adopted by the set committee the resolution includes the mpc's decision uh, on the policy repo rate so you can find out the key rates uh, that are being announced by uh the reserve bank uh, rbi uh, which i am i can also show show you here uh this is the by when you click uh, you will find these rates here so the key rates are available here so when you visit this uh, website uh, you will be uh, getting access to the key rates including repo rate uh, the cash reserve rate the slr and bank rate as well as other rates whichever we have discussed in this class session uh, you will be getting a clear idea what all the rates uh, rbi has been using so during suppose for example uh, when they have been do you uh, during uh, the economies economies at a uh, crisis time or in a recessionary time then obviously you can see that most most probably rbi will be following an expansionary monetary policy so at that time their objective is to increase the liquidity in the economy accordingly the rates the key rates will be adjusted will be uh, announced so we have seen that uh, india has been following rbi has been following inflation targeting uh, since 2016 uh, that means rbi has been following the inflation targeting by abandoning the operating or intermediate target of monetary aggregate that is the m3 so as i have mentioned you the earlier uh, our inflation target is 4% day to uh, 4% with a lower and upper upper limit of 2% 
So here uh, the monetary policy committee um, determines the policy repo rate, uh, the rate at which commercial bank can borrow from uh, the central bank by pledging collaterals, uh, that is the policy repo rate uh, to recruit to achieve the inflation target. So accordingly we can also say that, um, so in one of the previous session I have said that uh, in contrast to the US where they have been following uh, interest rate targeting, India has been following monetary aggregate targets. But you can see that since 2016, since we have been following the inflation targeting and in order to achieve that, uh, we have been following the intermediate target that the operating target of um, interest rate, interest rate are the uh, intermediate target. So in that way we can say that we abandoned uh, monetary aggregate that the monetary money supply target in 2016 and with the final inflation target uh, in order to achieve this we have been following uh, the interest rate target that means interest rate target is nothing but the repo rate that is the uh, repo rate that we have been following. So an intermediate target, uh, remember an intermediate target I have given a definition here is a variable that a central bank, the central bank controls not because the variable is important. So for example here the repo rate, uh, this is not the final outcome variable because this is not because the variable itself is important but because controlling it for example repo rate here uh, the policy makers believe they are influencing the ultimate policy targets that the inflation uh, growth in real GDP employment uh, in a predictable way. So what we have covered so far, we in this session we gave an overview of uh, the functions of the Reserve Bank of India and then we discussed um, what are the monetary policy making process in India and the also we also discussed that RBI has been following uh, the inflation targeting since 2016. And in the next session, uh, we will continue this discussion. We will also discuss how the independence of central bank uh, is also important uh, in the effectiveness of monetary policy. Thank you very much. Uh, see you in the next session.